Hey guys, it's Forsake Reality here with the third episode of the Mario Power Ups tutorial series. And in this episode, we're going to be looking into our interfaces and how to basically send variables between two blueprints without casting to that blueprint specifically. And that's useful so that, for example, we won't have the cast or master character. So if you ever wanted to move things over, you'll only need to move the interface over because, and you won't have to go around changing casts and character references to the new character because you'll have, you'll have it being sent through the interface. You basically be feeding your variables into the interface from your character, which, which you'll just need to set up your initialization for your interface and your new character. And then it'll automatically send those variables to wherever is being mess the message is being received. So without further ado, we will get into that. So the first thing we're going to want to go do is go to our blueprints folder, right click, new folder, all that interfaces, I'm going to open it up, right click, go to our blueprints, click blueprint interface, call that BPI for blueprint interface, character interface. That's because that's going to send variables from our character elsewhere. We're going to open that up. And our yeah, let's name that character variables for now. And we will now go into our master character. It's in our character folder here. Go to our class. We're going to want to click class settings. And we're going to want to search for our character interface and add that. Also, in our character interface, we need to create a couple outputs or one for now. And it's going to be our giant to determine if we're a giant. We're going to send this variable to our animation blueprint. And we're going to use that to st to uh, change animations. Um, I'm going to quickly set my character movement to 400 in here. Something I forgot to do in the last video. Um, now that we have that done. I'm going to move my inputs. So it'll be a little cleaner. Control X and Control V. And your inputs in an input graph and your blank event graph. So when your character starts, then begin play. We want to get our character variables. The target is going to be self. That's where we're getting the variable. And inside this, just gonna plug that in like that. And um, actually, because we set this up like that, we can go back to our event graph, and we actually don't need this um, because when our character is created, the interface is initialized, and this this um, interface function will run. And it will return the giant, which we get from here, and it will send it into the interface, which will have a message being waiting to receive, and the message will be received in our animation blueprint, which I'm going to rename Master Anim BP. And I'm going to fix up redirectors just in case. So the anim graph or our event graph, first of all, to clean this up a bit because I hate the mess that they make here. Okay. Um create a new graph called update graph. And that's where our update animation is gonna be all stored. So there's eventually going to be a decent amount of code going through here. And in our event graph, we're going to 
want to get it. We're going to cast the character. So when when the blueprint is initialized, cast character. Try get pawn owner. If you notice that first we'll just create the character reference. But we have the character we have a reference to our main character class, which is the parent of our blueprint right here, which doesn't have this variable in it, for example. So you can't call out just search giant, it won't show up. And so the fix for that we could either cast to our master character and get the reference from there, create the reference that way, or to make it more modular and easy to add into other assets. We can set the character reference to the main one and use an interface to send the variables over when the characters initialize. It's now sending the variable into here. We can use this character to access the interface. So I'm just going to leave that there for now. Go to my update graph. And I'm going to delete this try get pawn owner. Because we're doing that, I'm on initialize. And we're just going to plug these in like so. And there's one more right here by the velocity. So there's three total that needed to be replaced. And then at the end here, we can check our message for our character variable. So you call, check your character interface. It will see, give you this message. We'll give you this message face, this message face, this interface message call. So that's receiving the message that this is calling and sending these variables in here. And then it's, this is receiving that message from our character reference and the variable is sitting in this message right here because we set it there and now it's setting it right here. Setting the character variables from the interface, I guess we'll I'll make more sense, I hope. And now that we have this in here, that is our giant. So print string, just to test it out, just that our interface is sending things over properly. It'll print out false on default because it's set the false and true if it is. So our giant mushroom is sent all from the character. It sets it to true right here, and then it says it's false after. So false, true. See, and the interface call is working 100%. So now we have access to the to this variable and any other variable you want to add a new one to send from your character. Say we wanted to add our any other variable. You could literally just uh, output put the name of your variable in there. It could be any kind of variable. It doesn't need to be a boolean. It will create it right here automatically. Once you compile this, or it'll crash your engine. Because sometimes that happens when you have things open. But no problem. Hopefully I didn't lose too much. Can we get that back open? Okay, we're crashing. I'm going to look into that and see what that is. I think it might just because we have the few classes open that are that have the interface in it and it can't change them properly with the with the classes open so that so I'm thinking 
that if I'm just going to double check, fix up redirectors, save all, I'm thinking that if I close out all of these and add a new parameter, yeah, that was my problem. Happens so that happens sometimes. So you try to. What? I'm gonna pause this and look into why that's causing a problem there. All right, so it seemed to crash that one more time. When I loaded the project back up, everything was running fine, and I couldn't find no more problems with it. So that was just that's just one weird engine issue that you can get sometimes with uh, interfaces, I suppose. But yeah, we are, I'll open everything back up. We're gonna go into our animation blueprint next. And now that we have this variable being set true and false through our interface message, which is right here in our interface, whenever we want, we could always send another one, like I was mentioning before by adding or remove adding a new variable there. Sometimes you'll encounter crashes with the engine. But don't worry, just close out of all the blueprints that are open that have access to it. Set up your variables and if it crashes again, load it up and hopefully that fix it will still work. It's gonna leave that there for now or I guess I'll just close out of the stuff that are have that have it open. And let's deal with the one more crash. You can see that's just what it is. Yeah, that seems to be it. Has a problem reading the character blueprint at first there, but after it reloads again, it seems to fix the problem for us. So now we're back to our single giant variable. And I showed you an example of adding a new one. So you can add multiple, but any variable you want to the interface and it's usable in any project. It's pretty useful. I just want to delete that print string. I'm going to go to my anim graph, which is right here. Default, idle run. Make some room. Get our giant variable. Blend. No, not this. Pull in. Closes. Oh my god. Closes by boo. And if we are not a giant, we'll run the normal one. Which I'm actually going to open up like that. Get to it quickly and I'm going to add the run. Well, and I'm going to go back here and I'm going to duplicate this animation. This is going to be our giant because we'll have, we won't be running in with this one. He already walks really fast. Copy and paste that. You can simply just get your other one and swap it out like that. So we are giants. We'll play this and we are not to play that. So now we play, we'll be playing this one and we can jog. Set our anime, set our speeds back to normal. We don't have the, you can set your speed down to 150 again if you want to walk. But I just did that so you can see the animation change. And now we're in our, we're in this animation and we're going way faster. So it should normally be jogging, but it isn't. And now we're jogging again. It's going twice as way faster. So yeah, that should be a jog. Um, just going to double check my notes here. And that's actually going to be everything for this episode. So if you found this episode helpful and want to see more, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any new tutorial uploads. If you like, if you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, feel free to leave those in the comment section below or join my community Discord server using the link in the description below. Thanks, and I will see you all in the next episode. Where I think we will work on the tiny mushroom.